Welcome to the Vance Hobby Lab. Today I'm going to be discussing the walking gait that I use for my spot micro build. I'm going to discuss the problems that I faced and the solutions I found. We will discuss keyframe animation, interpolation, and the walking gait pattern. Be sure to stay until the end where I will have a demo of the finished walking gait algorithm. Let's get started. The algorithm that I use for building the walking gait is known as keyframe animation. It is a method for animating the legs by moving each foot through a looping set of keyframe positions. Each keyframe defines both the position of the foot and the time interval between keyframes. To determine the servo angles that I need in order to achieve the desired foot position, I will need inverse kinematics. If you haven't seen my previous video on inverse kinematics, I suggest watching it as a refresher. In this animation, there are four keyframes. They move the foot up, forward, down, and back. This animation loops continuously to perform a forward motion walking gait. Using a naive keyframe animation algorithm can lead to a few problems. First off, uncontrolled movement paths. Keyframe animation moves the foot position between two defined points using inverse kinematics to control multiple servos. Since the speed of a hobby servo can't be controlled and some servos may have further to travel, some servos may achieve their position faster than others. This means that there might not be a smooth path between any two keyframes, which is an issue if you're trying to keep the foot in contact with the ground. Since the servos are going to move at their maximum speed, the foot may achieve its position faster than the animation intended. This results in a snappy or jerky movement. This behavior can generate excess momentum that is then translated into the main chassis which can throw off your robot's balance, causing it to become unstable. We can solve this with interpolation by subdividing the keyframes into smaller segments and then recalculating the inverse kinematics for each segment. We can gain more control over the servos by increasing the number of segments. This will generate a smooth and controlled movement between keyframes. Notice the difference of the animation with interpolation on the left and without the interpolation on the right. The one with interpolation is much smoother and doesn't cause the stand to shake as much. It should be noted that I've already added a small amount of interpolation when the foot is at its lowest position. In order to get the timing of the keyframe animation correct, I subdivided one keyframe so that the time it takes to move the foot up, forward, and down is the same as the time it takes to move the foot back when it is already on the ground. Balance is crucial for an effective walking gait. In order to walk, it will have to lift up one or more of its feet from the ground. During this time, it can't fall over. Its balance doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to balance on just two feet, but it has to balance well enough not to fall over while its feet are off the ground. I found it helpful for it to take quick, small steps. The quicker the steps, the less time its feet are off the ground. The less time the feet are off the ground, the less time it has to lose its balance. As an added precaution, I also secured the battery. The design allows the battery to slide around on the inside of its chassis. By adhering some Velcro to the battery in the underside of the chassis, I secured the battery and prevented weight from shifting during movement. Care has to be taken to properly calibrate the robot. This involves manually zeroing each servo. This topic was covered more in depth in the previous video. Having properly calibrated the servos can help maintain balance. Just like a wobbly table, if all the legs aren't where they're supposed to be, there's no way that it will be stable. In addition, hobby servos don't provide any feedback, so there's no way to determine the angle of the servo in software. You can't reliably adjust or fix the servo calibration at runtime, so it has to be painstakingly checked manually. With the servos properly calibrated, it can move generally in a straight line with little trouble. Compared to uncalibrated servos, where it's struggling to maintain balance and is having trouble walking forward. It keeps popping back up onto its hind legs, preventing its front legs from making contact with the ground. To demonstrate the walking gait, I flip the robot on its back so you can see the path of its feet. I pulled the feet closer into the center and slowed down the keyframe animation so that it would show up better on camera. Normally I would prefer a wider stance with quicker steps as that would have better balance. For this walking gait, I synchronize diagonal pairs of legs. While one pair is taking a step, the other is maintaining balance and moving the robot. 
To move forward, it simply steps forward and moves the ground backwards. To move backwards, that operation can be played in reverse. Turning can be more tricky. The front and back halves have to move in opposite directions. A naive strategy uses a simple linear translation like used for the forward or backward movement, only with the front and back halves reversed. An improved strategy uses a rotation where the path of the foot curves around the robot's pivot point. You can see how this new rotation strategy produces a fairly reliable rotation. Before I get to the demo, if you found this content helpful, please be sure to give me a like. If you want to see future content like this, be sure to subscribe. Alright, enjoy the demo.